So, OnePlus' integration with Oppo seems to be causing some unfavorable shift in dynamics. Yes, Color OS 12 is more polished than Oxygen OS 12 and seems like that's going to be the case until an unified OS comes about in 2022. Hi, my name is Ashad. you're watching My Smart Price and let's get down into this deep dive review of Color OS 12 and comparison against Oxygen OS 12. But before we move on, don't forget to hit that red subscribe button and the bell icon right next to it to get notified whenever My Smart Price puts out an awesome new tech video because we'll take all the support that we can get because we're trying to hit 100k really soon. Now the first thing that stood out to me is the new and streamlined design which Oppo claims is more inclusive. I believe that has a lot to do with the fact that Oppo is working now with a linguistic experts team to actually provide a more accurate, contextual and localized UI in 67 different languages, including 13 Indian ones. I tried the OS in Tamil and it did seem to rewrite all of the system UI and first party app text in pure Tamil, which is great. As for the design, Oppo has redesigned page layouts in its first party apps such as, you know, phone and settings. There's just a the right amount of white space everywhere with a huge emphasis on ensuring that there's very little truncation happening in whichever language you're using the UI no less. However, the text wrapping issues still persist in certain parts of the UI. For example, in the customization menu that pops up when you long press on the home screen has a broken word with the single letter S being moved to the second line, which could have been easily avoided. That minor niggle aside, I really like the attention to detail in UI design with a strong adherence to golden ratios and of course clean typography as well. Now, Oppo has also moved away from the flat design icons to 3D ones. The idea was to make them feel like buttons. Plus, the app names have a slight shadow to them too. The floating windows have nicely rounded edges as well. It all feels very cohesive now. Although here comes the fun part. Oxygen OS 12's entire design language, the icons, the home screen, settings, app drawer, you name it, everything is same as Color OS 12. Now within the settings page, the battery page, the display page, the personalization page, everything is exactly the same. That man's an imposter. That man is the imposter. Having said that, Oppo has also imported a few customizations and features from OnePlus's Oxygen OS, the most important one being the way the animations are tuned. Oppo says ColorOS 12 has an upgraded Quantum Animation Engine 3.0. But from the way an app folds into the dock to the general swiftness in UI, which is far more natural and intuitive now, it feels a lot like Oxygen OS. Evidently, the fact that, you know, the animations on ColorOS are fine-tuned to the efficiency of, you know, Oxygen OS is possibly the best thing about ColorOS 12 right now. Now, secondly, the games app from Oxygen OS has been imported to ColorOS 12, but Game Center continues to exist as well, which feels wasteful. Maybe Oppo is just testing the waters and will stick to only one app for the future. Now, another borrowed feature is the portrait silhouette setting in the always on display mode, which is basically another word for canvas personalization on Oxygen OS. I do like this AOD though. Now, moving on, there's one more reason why ColorOS 12 is making the right moves and Oxygen OS 12 is not. You get Android 12's Material U theming engine in which the phone picks up colors of the elements based on the shades in your wallpaper. It works really well and the theme keeps automatically adjusting itself when you change the wallpaper. But yes, both ColorOS 12 and Oxygen OS 12 have this new inventive wallpaper feature that automatically creates custom wallpapers based on the image you feed it. It is rather cool, but you'll see that designs are repetitive, so there's a possibility that you might get bored soon. Also, it feels redundant that both ColorOS 12 and Oxygen OS 12 continue to have a separate theme store. But yes, I doubt Oppo will want to slip up on the opportunity to make more money from the themes sold in the store, whatever little it is. While design is one thing, ColorOS 12 is packed with extra features now, some new, some improved with added functionalities. For example, Oppo's three-finger screenshot and translation has now extended to the smart sidebar as well. I find this super convenient because our work involves tracking leaks, which are often published in different languages such as Mandarin, Dutch, French, etc. So this ease of translation definitely helps. And there's this new background stream option that pops up in the smart sidebar when you're watching any video on a streaming app like YouTube, Netflix or Prime. What this essentially means is that you can actually listen to the video in the background. It works even if you don't have a premium account on YouTube. How cool is that? 
Now floating windows have been around for a bit but in ColorOS 12 you can easily extend the size by merely dragging from the corner and you can drag and drop a photo from the photos app into any compatible floating window for example Gmail. Now there are some improvements to the quick return bubble as well but for some odd reason it didn't work with any of the games that I tried which includes BGMI, Call of Duty and Angry Birds as well. Maybe this could be a beta related issue so if there is any change in the future I will definitely let you guys know in a comment section below. Android 12 features such as conversation widget and quick bubbles are also present but I find them very weirdly implemented. I couldn't get around to using them effectively. If you guys have any tips do let me know in the comment section below. Finally, the accessibility features have been broken down into four easy to understand segments and Oppo has also included GIFs to make it easier to understand these features. Just uh, basically a whole lot of UI polish and upgrades happening all over the operating system. Now I'm glad that Oppo has also concentrated on privacy and security improvements across the board. First and foremost, you get the privacy dashboard feature from Android 12 here. It gives you a comprehensive readout of which apps used your camera, microphone, location and more. Secondly, you can give apps only your approximate location data if you so wish. What this means is that if a certain weather app needs you to give weather data for your location, it doesn't need pinpoint accuracy anyway, which is another pretty nifty feature. Plus, if any app is using your phone's microphone or camera, it alerts you in the top notification bar. Now, I find this quite revealing and useful. It is pretty handy to actually sift through data and figure out if any miscreant apps are actually using uh, the camera, microphone, location, etc. Whatever access without your permission. Finally, Oppo also incorporates Android's safety and emergency settings, which lets you mark your emergency contact, give your medical info and more in case of a genuine health emergency. Since the smartphone is now almost always on you, this feature makes a whole lot of sense. Every operating system comes with some or the other form of performance upgrade. The first thing I noticed is the extended RAM feature which has been around for a while but I just wanted to highlight that it's baked into the operating system. One really cool thing I noticed is that the game mode has a tool that lets you see the FPS data in real time but it is slightly broken now. It is also available on Oxygen OS 12 for what it is worth. Another new addition is a revamped battery dashboard that maps daily usage statistics and battery consumption. Moving on, Oppo also has a new AI system booster built in collaboration with Google, which apparently reduces memory usage by 30%, uh, you know, reduces power consumption by 20% and increases battery life on an average by 12% and much, much more. All of these numbers are definitely great, but unfortunately, I couldn't find a toggle switch, if any. Maybe it's just running in the background and doing all of these things. You know what, I'll double check this and get back to you guys. Now, as for the upgrade timeline for different Oppo phones, we have a handy chart for you to see here. You can pause here to see if your Oppo phone is in the list. But note that this is only the upgrade timeline for beta versions. Oppo is currently non-committal about the stable upgrades. Although in our briefing, Oppo did mention that they might be working on a light variant of ColorOS 12 for you know budget phones with lower RAM configurations. Now, if that actually comes to fruition in the future or not is something that we'll have to wait and watch. I really like the spit and polish applied to ColorOS 12 and the fact that you know Oppo is working very closely with Google to integrate Android 12 score features is also pretty good. What's also very commendable is that Oppo has released the beta parallelly alongside the Android 12 launch as well which is actually pretty fast. Most importantly, the changes to ColorOS 12 and the similarities with Oxygen OS 12 clearly indicates that ColorOS 12 is going to be the base for the unified version of you know, the operating system that's going to be launched in 2022 for Oppo and OnePlus phones. Now, most of Oxygen OS's original identity has been wiped out by Oxygen OS 12. It now feels like a fork of Color OS 12, just like Realme UI. There's not too much original going out here. And it might come as a shock to OnePlus users or OnePlus fans who actually picked up a OnePlus phone very recently. When they get a new upgrade, for example, the 80 users and 99 Pro users, they're going to be shocked and jolted by the fact that their OnePlus phone has turned into an Oppo phone overnight. I know I've been talking about Oxygen OS 12 a lot in our Color OS 12 review, but that's just where it is. Now Oxygen OS 12 feels just like Realme UI, where it's just a fork of Color OS. Now that doesn't take away from the fact that the Color OS 12 upgrade is pretty good. I just hope that OnePlus fans can make peace with this fact that, you know, this is the future for OnePlus phones. Now, one of the cool things that this enables is the fact that, you know, OnePlus phones will now get timely updates and, you know, could be 
far less bug free as well in fact i noticed more bugs in oxygen os 12 compared to you know color os 12 as well like i said in my review of uh, you know the oneplus not Two, uh, I really wish that OnePlus would rip off the Band-Aid uh, and you know just move to ColorOS immediately instead of doing this you know interim thing. Because sorry OnePlus fans, in its current state, even in beta, ColorOS 12 feels more polished compared to Oxygen OS 12. So yeah, so that's where it is. Now, what do you guys think of both these operating systems? Do let me know in the comment section below. Until next time, this is Ashar from My Smart Press signing off. Goodbye and Godspeed, my friends.